Hey everyone, welcome into Rounding the Bases Live. I'm Joel Goldberg, and this is different, without a doubt. Um, for, for any of you that followed me on social media, uh, and this is going out start on Facebook, we're working out some some kinks and and uh, and all that stuff because, and, and I'll talk with my guest about this in a moment. Uh, so many of us can be perfectionists, and we work hard to, to perfect that craft. Right now, everybody's adjusting. Everybody is is trying to figure out a way to make this work. And so uh, we're on the fly. And so this is the first ever Rounding the Bases live video version. I'm going to do this Monday through Friday. For those that don't know when I'm not busy broadcasting Royals baseball, there's obviously none of that right now. Uh, it should have been opening day on Thursday. And for um, when I'm not doing that, I'm doing my Rounding the Bases podcast, which is entrepreneurs, leaders, uh, talking about leadership and culture and, and different topics where I think that there are a lot of similarities between the baseball sports world and business. And, and then I speak on the side. The only thing that has continued through all of this with the coronavirus is the uh, podcast. I had about 10 episodes that were recorded already leading up to the baseball season, knowing that I could continue to release my run the bases conversations every Monday. Uh, those are audio. You can find those, you know, wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then I thought, you know, I, I, I didn't interview any of those guests about the economy, coronavirus, uh, the pandemic, the, the change of lives for all of us, because those interviews were done in advance. And I like those interviews to be able to be evergreen enough that a year or two years down the road, people can, can learn from those and they're not time sensitive. With that said, what I realized is that there are so many entrepreneurs that I've met and many, many others that I haven't that have worked so hard to build something so special. And now they're all adjusting and, and trying to just to stay alive. And I thought this would be a great opportunity, especially with so many sitting at home here in Kansas City and around the world, uh, to tell some of those stories. So, and I'm switching, I'm doing this all myself here with the beauty of technology. I bring in right now Luke Wade, who was, Luke, I I can't believe this, but you, you were a guest of mine. It's been almost two years. I looked it up. May 31st, 2018, episode 215. Luke is the founder of KC Crew. Uh, of course, you and I have seen each other many times since. I didn't want to have to see you like this. With that said, I'm glad I get a chance to see you. Um, first and foremost, um, I want to ask the question of how you're doing. And, and, and I want to say it this way. That question takes on a new meaning to me now. We've always walked by people in the hallways when we were in school. Uh, out in public, hey, how you doing? And it's not that we don't care, but it's just sort of a formality a lot of times. Right now, I think it's really important to ask people, how are you doing? Because in some form or another, uh, we're all struggling. Uh, so how are you doing? Yeah, I mean, my standard response, I absolutely agree, you know, normally is, hey, I'm doing great. Uh, ever since this has kind of all happened, <laughs> my answer right now has been, I'm alive. Um, and I think that's key for several reasons. One, I mean, I'm being grateful because there are people that are dying from this. They're dying from all kinds of other things. Um, so honestly, I'm alive. Yes, my entire business and industry is shut down right now. Uh, people such as uh, like myself all over the country are shut down, laying off people, have no income for this foreseeable future. All of those things are negative and horrible and nothing I would have thought about two years ago when I was uh, interviewing with you the first time. But uh, as of right now, I'm alive um, and moving forward. So uh, how are you doing, Joel? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Um, yeah, you can turn that around. You can interview me too. I mean, we're all we're all in this together. I, I do know that, and uh, I'm good. You know, it's. I think I have. I've had like so many of my freak out moments. I've tried to minimize them. Uh, we all have pity parties. I'm not going to tell anybody how to act. I'm, I'm going to try to tell everybody um, to to have hope. I'm going to tell everybody. To, I'm going to try to bring optimism to people. I, I've always been a glass half full kind of guy. And, you know, I've caught myself and I think it's okay to have had some of those pity party moments, but I'm trying to limit those to, you know, 30 minutes, an hour and try to snap out of it because I do think that there are a lot of opportunities here. We're going to come out. If we have our health, we have our, our, our families, we're, we're going to come out of this. Uh, life may not look the same afterwards. And, and there are a lot of sacrifices uh, on my end. Uh, maybe not a lot of people know this. Um, I, I think being in the in the public spotlight, certainly here in Kansas City. By the way, I, not that everybody knows who I am. I'm never offended when somebody goes, "You who? I, I don't know you. Who are you?" That, never offended. But we're not many of us on TV doing uh, 
sports, not local news, but the the people that travel with teams and broad sports like baseball, uh, we're freelance contractors. So um, while while there may be an appearance that guys like me uh, haven't made, and look, they pay me to talk about baseball. Life's pretty good. They don't pay me when they don't play. And oh, by the way, my other business, which I started a few years ago, public speaking, uh, there are not a whole lot of people in public right now, uh, if you want to uh, take it literally like that. So um, what that means is having to adjust and 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 hope that that paycheck that hasn't come since October, regular paycheck, early October, um, maybe comes in June or July. We'll see. But that gives me an opportunity to do things like this. Um, and, and hopefully it's just a way to get back. And I know how hard you've worked. So it, be, before we get into why there is a big, massive bingo sign behind your head. Um, and, and we'll, uh, here, we can, we can do that. And, and as we let people know about your business, and we'll put up how to get a hold of you right down there. Look, I've now, in, in the TV world terms, become a technical director all at once uh, <laughs> and the host. I'm impressed. Um, I, I love this banner. That's great. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, well. My uh, my marketing manager Danielle Welch, who's a small business owner herself, and, and she's actually going to be on with me tomorrow on Rounding the Bases Live. Um, she designs all that stuff, at least the colors and the fonts and all that. And I'm just pushing buttons. But um, I've got Casey crew up there right now. And before we get into how you're adjusting, let's go back again. If anybody wants to listen to my podcast episode 115 on Rounding the Bases, but Luke built an amazing business that truly brought people together, which is a challenge right now, obviously, because we can't all be together. Tell me about how you came about KC Crew. And if I remember correctly on the interview uh, that we did originally, you just want to find a place for your friends to hang out and, you know, play baseball or softball or, or whatever it was. So tell me tell me how it started and where, where it was before all this mess came about. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Basically, I'm from not from Kansas City. I moved here for a job and I was working and living downtown and, you know, kind of fell in love with Kansas City. This was about 10 years ago. And downtown was really growing and becoming thriving. And people were talking about how cool downtown was. But yet there were, weren't really a lot of things to do downtown yet for young professionals at that time. I think I was 26, 27. And so I just got sick of driving to the Burbs to play uh, in softball and sand volleyball leagues and just asked a couple of my friends if they want to play in a softball league downtown. Got some yeses. So I just rented a field, threw up a website, which was my day job at the time, building uh, software and websites and uh, had about a thousand people sign up the first year. I was able to keep my full time job for three years um, and grew into softball, sand volleyball and a couple other things um, and had about 3000 people playing. And then I was able to leave my job. And that was about six years ago. Uh, last year, um, we had touched over 51,000 people in Kansas City alone through our sports leagues and around 16,000 through our one day events. So we'd almost reached over 70,000 people in eight years through fun and sports and just community and driving people into local places. So uh, the cool niche was we actually worked with parks and rec departments private facilities, which is where I'm at now is Hy-Vee Arena, uh, to help them essentially fill unused spaces with young professionals. So uh, up until about a week ago, uh, that was my full-time job. Uh, <laughs> kind of still is, but my wife actually had left her job too. So we've been running it together. Um, and yeah, it's been going absolutely amazing up until about a week ago. <laughs> yeah. And and, uh, and by the way, the, the, w as I work all this out, there'll be some glitches here and there, and there may be some buffering. And so I hope you'll you'll all bear with us. That's just the world that we're all living in right now. And um, you know, going to do my best to to make this look good. Um, I'll put up Luke's. You, you've got the website up there. I'll put up how to get a hold of him in a little bit too, because um, Luke is an innovator. He he is someone, and and as I've gotten to know Luke over the last couple of years, not someone that sits still. Uh, and lots of things happen. I mean, you are always on the move. You, you look like a guy that has always got a million things going on. And so I know that you're having to to adjust. Give uh, for for um, a little bit of background here, a little bit of context to the, the magnitude of KC Crew, where things were. Um, this was not just your standard softball, kickball, basketball. You guys got uh, pretty creative with a lot of types of events, not necessarily even all sports, maybe competition, but but again, things that brought people together. Rattle off 
you don't have to do all of them if you don't want, but rattle off all the different types of leagues that you were running. Yeah, so like you said, I always start off with the normal stuff that people think of. So we do softball, sand volleyball, indoor volleyball, uh, basketball, um, and kickball. And then our weird stuff, um, those are just our leagues. We also have cornhole, pickleball. We even have a karaoke league where teams come and sing head-to-head -head against each other and the crowd votes on the winner. That's one of our coolest communities that we have. Um, essentially, those are our like sports leagues. We even have done axe throwing. We do beer dye. We do all this stuff. The entire idea is really just focusing on meeting new people and having fun in the community. Um, so we really look at Hey, I, you know, I want the people who want to play for fun rather than the people who want to play competitively and argue and yell every week. This is who we're after. We want the fun kids, the mm -hmm. fun adults who are looking to have a good time and we're able to give that to them. That's just our league side. Our one day events that you talk about, we do murder mystery parties where everybody's in on a hundred people and you don't even know who the murderer is. You could be the murderer until the last minute. Mm -hmm. uh, we do glow in the dark golf tournaments. We do a downtown open urban golfing event where you go up and down main street, chipping off buildings, putting inside bar bars and you use the street cars, your golf cart. We do a grilled cheese festival. Um, we do, uh, Oh, our underachievers run was brand new last year where we start with a pizza party. You walk a block and it ends with champagne and a donut uh, called the 0.5 K. So little bit of everything. And again, the entire idea is really just having fun, meeting new people and getting out in the community. And, and in such a creative and fun way. And I know that was growing and growing, but your, your background too helped you with a lot of this, didn't it? Just in terms of technology, because this isn't just, and I feel like you were able to move into the new age of where everything is going, has gone maybe before a lot of others. I mean, just in terms of the traditional sports world, running a, you know, a softball league or something like that involved sign-up sheets and, you know, mailing in and all that. And, and you, I mean, you, you, you were able to do it all in here, right? Yeah, we, we actually built a software. So that's my background is I used to build software and websites for a living. Um, so when I started Casey Crew, I just built my own website because I already knew how to do it. Um, and then it grew and grew and grew. And as it kept growing, I kept building more into the website and the software. And then several years ago, I was able to essentially uh, rebuild that um, into its own app. Um, and so it's called League Ally. So I actually have another company uh, called League Ally and Facility Ally. Essentially, we built a platform to make it easier to sign up for leagues, manage your leagues, schedules, payments, waivers, you name it. It essentially manages the leagues for you. Um, and the kind of big idea is that it keeps a global account. So as we use the software across the country, you could travel from city to city and be connected through sports as you travel. So that was kind of the big idea. So yeah, not only did I have Casey Crew going, I had a software company as well that I launched a couple of years ago, hy Arena is using the facility side. Chicken and Pickle was using the software side. Um, but when nobody's playing in sports leagues, no one's using the yeah. software. So it essentially um, all of that is on hold currently. But yeah, I was able to kind of segue something that I thought was meant to be fun with softball, sand volleyball league into a business and then another business as well, selling the software and then really helping people consult them on how to run their leagues more efficiently, what they should use, what they should do, which is the whole community creator idea that I just launched this year. So then all of this happens. You know, I, I, I mean, I've thought about this a lot. I know that when, when, when this all went down and, and I, I really, I mean, the night that I'll remember is that Wednesday night when that NBA game got postponed and it was um, Rudy Gobert of, of Utah. They suddenly revealed that, that he had the coronavirus and that, I think it was the same night that Tom Hanks said that he had it. So it became a little bit more real. And, and then they postponed the NBA season. And, and, and then suddenly I thought, they're not going to even have the rest of this Big 12 tournament. And then they're not going to have the NCAA tournament. And I started thinking from, from a personal, not even selfish standpoint, baseball's not starting on time. And then, of course, that happened. And then I thought, baseball, it's not going to be two weeks. And, and so as I had my little pity party, I quickly realized – Oh, about eight days ago, I was starting to reach out to people. And I think you you and I probably talked somewhere around then too, that that um, almost everybody's going through this. So yes, you can feel sorry for yourself, uh, but I don't think that we're in this alone. So I, I, I think at least for me, when I sit there and think, whoa, is me, I think of the, the restaurant owner. I, I think of the people that are working in the restaurants that – uh, that, that, you know, in our world, that's the vendors at the stadium that, that suddenly, what do you do? So, and I think, look, I'm out a lot of income or about to be out a lot of income, but that'll affect my family and we'll, we'll figure it out. But you have employees, really have employees. And I, 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 I suspect we'll be back as you can. 
but I'm just wondering from, from a guy like yourself, a leader and someone that's employed a lot of people that have a lot of fun and that really truly enjoy what they do. Cause Luke, you are, you know, that not everybody loves what they do. And, and I, I feel so fortunate every day to get a chance to, to have a job that, that people would kill to have. And, um, and I don't, I've, I've never taken that for granted, but you're, you're, you're in a job that's a ton of work. That's a lot of play. It's a lot of fun. And, and, and now you, as the guy running this thing, had to tell people at this time that that they had to go home and that you couldn't pay them right now. How did you deal with that? Because that's not something I've had to deal with, but I would think that that is in many ways harder than yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Honestly, I try and be, I'm very transparent and very honest with everyone that I do business with, work with, employ. Um, I try and be as open as I possibly can be. And so I was just honest with them, um, you know, and I, I go back a little bit, you know, this thing really surprised me. I think, you know, you talked about the NBA game and I wasn't really even paying attention then. I mean, even, you know, up until a week ago on Sunday when they announced the 50 person limit and then it changed to 10, we were still running leagues. I was standing here at Hy-Vee Arena uh, helping with a pickleball league. We had volleyball league, basketball league, and people were still coming. Um, you know, we were under the 50 limit. So I just kept thinking, you know, the NBA is way bigger than we are. You know, the, all these things are way bigger than we are. We'll never be affected. Let's just try and get through. And we actually only had one week left of our winter season to finish. And then we had a month before spring started, which is now two weeks away. But at that point, I was like, let's get through winter and let's, let's, hopefully this passes before spring happens we'll get through it well i'm standing there at pickleball and i see that 50 person announcement and immediately think that we can't finish there's no way we could run our leagues with that that red restriction and then 10 people came out later and you know honestly i don't know if people keep asking me like you know how, how are you doing so much how are you keeping like staying so positive and i I just, I, I have no other thought. I mean, there's the option. I had this conversation right. with my wife right now. There's every excuse in the world to sit at home and do nothing and pray for a bailout and pray for, you know, money or whatever, whatever it is that you need to survive. You can just sit at home and wait for it to happen, or you can do something that helps other people. And then hopefully comes back to you in the end. Um, and so that Sunday night that happened, I came in Monday morning. I sat down with all my employees first thing and was just honest with them. Here's where we're at. We have no foreseeable income for the next two months. We don't know how long this is going to last. You know, um, we have bills to pay. We have all these things. And so we also looked at it as a benefit for letting them go earlier to get unemployment check rather than not be able to get that for a couple of weeks. And so there's a lot of things that I've learned as a business guy. I'm a tech nerd that fell into business. And so that's why I feel like I am open and tra transparent, just letting everybody know like, hey, I'm figuring this out. I don't really know, you know, know the best option. This has never happened before. And so here's everything that I'm thinking. Here's what we're working on. And, you know, I've invited them to be involved in some things. We still have some employees helping out that I'm cutting them on percent deals, you know, if we can generate any revenue, I, I want to bring back my employees as soon as possible. But I think for me, it was a bigger thing of Casey crew. You know, if we're not able to survive this, then not only do I not have employees and not be able to pay my employees, but we also don't have an organization that's around for all the people that have been playing, you know, 15,000 people a year in Kansas City alone that just play with us to have fun and, you know, get through their day, you know, their day to day lives. Um, and if we're not there for them when this is over, you know, that would be a bigger letdown for me than anything. So, you know, after that Sunday night announcement, we just. You know, I, I first had the idea of let's create the top 10 things you can do from home. And we built an entire Web page and a bunch of research. And so we just started putting things out that really no benefit to us. You can't pay us for them. You can't buy this information. We just put it out for free. And it's really drove a lot of traction to us as we've tried to figure out some other things. So, you know, it's it's been a really tough time. And yes, it, it's you know, there's a lot of negatives. But at the end of the day, negativity isn't what's going to get us through this. It's positivity and helping each other uh, get through the, these hard times. So. Well, I mean, I, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, you're speaking my language, and there are a couple things. One, I've thought about exactly what you were just saying, and, and it's the same thing, by the way. I, I, I realized, it took me a lot of years, I've been broadcasting 25 years, but I realized along the way, my, my getting into television and sports and local news and then traveling with baseball teams was my dream. It was my love of sports. But what I have really come to realize over the years um, especially as I've heard from people in the military, um, like, like yourself, you were in the military, that we provide a diversion from love. Yeah, sometimes people take all this too seriously, and it's it, it, they, they treat it as life and death. And they know it's not, but you know what? It's their team, and it's like, I, I actually understand because of my business, I don't have the same emotions that most fans because it's work, and, and, but, but, but when I'm not involved in it, if it's uh, to, 
to the University of Wisconsin when the Badgers are playing. I try to take it seriously. I'm not psycho, but just because it's, it's a fun diversion, you know, it's like that's what that's the way sports fans grew up. And whether it's sports or theater or or, or whatever it is, that's what sports has always done, and 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 the arts. And we don't have that right now. That's what you were providing for people. And I think it sounds like is what you are doing. So if it is bingo or if it is something that you can do from home and you're still bringing people together. I mean, I'm sitting here on this computer doing happy hours with people uh, on a nightly basis now. And whether it's a couple people or five people or or it's a, a Zoom family chat with, you know, 16, 18 people from three generations. And I, I think, you know, when you talk about uh, we're all talking about kind of coming up on the other side. Well, we're going to have a different perspective on things. And and I think that by you doing good in the community, um, one, it feels good. You know, I mean, it's it, it's just sitting around and moping. Uh, and, and and two, people will remember that for you. And it's it's nice to have people still rely on you and, and, and all that. So um, I want to put this up there. There's my technology. And if you want to get a hold of Luke, uh, you could you could email him. I'm, I'm sure about anything and you can go to kccrew.com and figure out how to get involved. This will, you will come back, Luke. I mean, I, when people are allowed to get outside and congregate, they are going to be desperately seeking people like you for what they're missing. How much now is on the fly adjusting to whatever you can do, the online stuff, and at what point do you start planning for what this looks like when all this scary mess ends? Yeah, I mean, honestly, last week, everything was on the fly. It was really funny. I, I you know, Like I said, you know, I have Casey Crew. You said it feels like I'm always on the go. And I was. I had meetings all the time. I have a software. We were working on opening a bar restaurant. Like, just a million things going on. And then when this all shut down, I feel like I'm just as busy as I was then. Um, but everything was on the fly. Everything's still on the fly. We put out a bingo event last Friday that had 30 people show up live and we email your bingo cards to you at home and we pull your bingo numbers right here. And that's how we record it behind us. And it was so much fun, you know, but we had issues, we had problems, you know, there was all these struggles, but everybody on it was, was so much fun and, and got it. And, you know, we think the bingo thing's really cool, but that's on the fly. We made it up. You know, uh, last night we had a dinner in flicks where we cooked a, a meal live where you could tune in and it was a meal from the movie hook. And so we had chicken legs and color food and, and essentially you got to watch us cook it live. You could cook it from home. And then we watched Netflix together and everybody was commenting together. So that was brand new last night. We had some technical issues. Essentially everything we're doing right now is on the fly, just trying to figure it out, but it's also putting things out for people to do. Um, most of everything we're putting out right now is free. Uh, we have a couple things. It's like $5 to buy a bingo card. Um, but that's, you know, ideally that helps us get through these times. If we can sell a bunch of a bingo events, uh, hopefully we can survive through this time. But like you said, the next step, you know, it's really hard to look into the future. I mean, we have no idea. They're, they said they're looking at this every two weeks. You know, it's we have a 30 day stay at home mandate that started today. So, you know, I don't I don't know when we're going to be able to go back outside. Our spring leagues were supposed to start April 13th. But right now we're we're just keeping our ears open to see when that is. As soon as that's announced or as soon as we have an inkling of we can go act outside again, we're going to bring that back, you know, but I think for the meantime right now, it's just putting things out that help people get through this. Um, even ourselves, like if I sat at home bored, I'd go crazy too. So why not offer yeah. something fun for other people to do that also keeps us, you know, busy at the same time. So uh, Danielle actually looks like she had a live comment. Um, you know, loyal customers to Casey crew right now. Um, you know, just reach out to us. We, we, you know, we have t-shirts, we have some things for sale, but come to our events, share our events, uh, check those out. We've got, virtual kickball. We've got FIFA tournaments. We got bingo. Uh, we have a whole lot of things we're working on. So come to our events, share our events. And if you have an idea, shoot it out to us. If we can make it happen, we'd love to make it happen. All right. That, Danielle's going to be my guest, by the way, tomorrow. And, and yeah, I was texting her as we were going too. Cause uh, you know, I, I, as, as a TV guy, I stress about who's seeing it, where's it going and all that. I mean, this, this um, same thing, Luke, I mean, we're on the fly and I know you and I both applied for LinkedIn Live over a week ago, our friend Aaron Folk was like, you guys need to do that. I feel like she probably told me to do that a month ago, and I just <laughs> didn't listen. I'm sorry. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're probably inundated right now. You and I are both waiting for approval on that. Uh, I want to stream this on YouTube. There's at least a 24-hour delay. I'm using uh, a platform called StreamYard, which seems really cool. And we'll keep figuring it out and, and make it better. Um, so, you know, that's that's the one thing that, that, that Danielle keeps telling me, messy action. 
Um, we, we can't look for that perfection anymore. I, I want to, we're going to wrap it up here in a few minutes, but I, I was just curious too, with your military background, I, I've always felt like the, the, the best leaders, it, it, the best leaders don't have to have come from the sports world or military, but there is a discipline and a structure to, um, certainly professional athletes and those in the military that, that, that oftentimes can either be life and death from the, from the military standpoint or, or job security um, from a sports standpoint, how much, cause you, you can't map all that stuff out in the military. A, a lot of times it is messy action. How much, if at all has, has that background, your background helped you on the fly here? Well, I think, you know, uh, I grew up playing sports. I grew up wrestling, played college football, uh, you know, was sent to Iraq, spent a year, I turned 20 and 21 years old in Iraq. And so, mm-hmm. and I think all of that really just helps me put things into perspective, right? Um, nothing, even this, you know, probably isn't as hard as my day-to-day was in Iraq. So again, I'm alive, <laughs> you know, so I have a, I have a keen sense of like, what, what's going on right now? Don't freak out. We're not getting shot at, you know, we are, st- we're stuck at home, right? What a better time to be stuck at home than when Netflix and Amazon and all these things that you, could you imagine doing this 10 years ago or without the internet? I mean, what would we have done? So I, I just look at, again, look at all the positives that we have right now, all the things you can have your virtual happy hours. I just planning a, a family cookout on Friday with my family to cook burgers together. So Again, I think all of those things that I've been through and all the things that I've learned through my life have really just helped me put those sort of things in perspective. Um, and so that's that's what helps me look forward. And then, yeah, leading. I mean, in the military, it's take action. I mean, the second something bad happens, you've got to take action. If you stand still, you're a target, right? So, um, so yes, I think all of that goes into play. Um, plus, I mean, I'm surrounded by a great family. A lot of my family are entrepreneurs, mentors, people like you and Aaron and, you know, a lot of people in this Kansas City community that are really helping out with each other. You know, I think the day after this started, there was a morning call at 8 a.m. every day for about five days of all these entrepreneurs jumping on and talking about what's going on and how they get handling this, and handling that. And so there's been a lot of great community and stuff happening behind the scenes during this. I think at the end of the day, it's, you know, just staying positive and, and again, looking forward and, and staying busy. Well, you know, I'm, I'm here to support you in any way. I, I feel like uh, for myself, if uh, if the opportunity to spread people's messages and stories, uh, if, if nothing else, it, it brings comfort to others that can listen to you and others say, wait a minute, you know what? They're going through it too. Or, oh, that's an interesting way to help myself. And if in turn, and we'll put this up again, if in turn people... Um, are looking for some entertainment right now, looking for a diversion, go to KC crew and just jump in. I mean, I, I think what Luke is doing is what so many others are doing. Um, they're just doing it for free at this point, because I think that'll all pay for itself. How, however that is down the road. And, and as we talked about, it certainly beats just sitting around and doing nothing and, and take a little bit of time to do nothing too. I mean, take a little bit of time to, to, to sit on the couch with the family and do all of that. But I think we all need to, to make sure we're not going stir crazy. So um, as we wrap it up, Luke, if uh, people can go to caseycrew.com, are there any events coming up in the in the coming days that people should be looking out for? Yeah, so we have something almost every single day now. Um, we have, uh, which is crazy if you think about a week ago, we didn't know any of this was existing. So yeah, we have Bunker Bingo, which is our virtual bingo twice a week. So Tuesday night, Friday for happy hour. Um, and then we're doing like a FIFA tournament Wednesday night, tomorrow night. Uh, I think we're doing a live karaoke as well. So I'm actually going to be going into uh, the karaoke bar um, on live streaming the lyrics so that you can sing karaoke from home. We'll have people team up and sing. Um, and then we're doing a virtual kickball event Thursday. Um, and then every morning I have a different sports challenge. I'm, I'm, in, I'm going live with a different sports expert on basketball, golf, pickleball, volleyball to give you tips and challenges you can do from home. And so we're doing that every day. And then I'm doing a rise and shine Monday, Wednesday, Friday with my buddy who is a yoga and a meditation teacher. Honestly, a lot of these things I'm doing for myself. I want to do yoga and meditation yeah. this morning because I need it right now. So I'm working with a buddy to go live and help others get access to that as well. So um, yeah, please check it out. If you have any ideas or if I can help you in any way, you know, I'm, I'm open to that. Please reach out to me. Um, and thank you, Joel, for putting this together and putting out the word. Um, we really appreciate it. And, you know, it is tough times, but you're absolutely right. Everyone is going through this and if it hasn't hit them yet, it's going to. So um, how can you be helpful? How can you help people in your community, whether it's your family, your neighborhood, whatever it is, just think about helping others. And uh, if I can help you in any way, please reach out to me. All right. Well, uh, likewise, same. And if anything, if I could do anything, um, 
any step of the way, you already know that. Uh, you, you know how to get a hold of me beyond all the uh, the public information via text, whatever it is. So um, we'll we'll keep doing that. Let's just keep trying to help everyone. And you know, when this all rebounds, I know that that uh, not just the athletes, but those that like sing, those that like to uh, whatever it is, uh, you probably have a league for it. Uh, and and if you don't yet, you'll come up with it because you're constantly creating new things. So. I can't wait. I've thought about this a lot. When whenever that first baseball game is for the Royals and and all the others around the country, how special! Uh, that'll be so much more special than any opening day, which is always a holiday in itself. So I know it's going to be the same for you guys too. Uh, Luke, thanks for being the first, and, and maybe we'll do it again. And I, I would just ask you already know this too. Um, one, pass on this interview and, and everything that we're doing, and 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 anyone. I I, I suspect that. Um, I'll start having a lot of people lining up wanting to come on just because people want to get their word out and, and people want to be able to share stories. And so I'm glad that you have been the first. And um, I know that you're going to rebound. I, I really do because of how hard you work and how much you care about people. So uh, I will let you get back to work <laughs> and we will talk, I know, soon. So um, as I said before, I, I know you don't sit still a whole lot. So I'll, I'll let you stop sitting and, and get back to, uh, to, to your day. Thanks, Joel. Appreciate it. All right, I'll talk to you soon. That is Luke Wade. I'm just going to switch over to this right here. See, I could do this all by myself. And I'll just wrap up the broadcast right now uh, by saying this. And we may hear, actually, I could probably just uh, drop Luke right now. I did that. I'm not used to doing having all the controls here. We've got people on the truck and people that, that do that at a very high level. This is elementary. Uh, if I could already figure it out, I can do that. Uh, here's my ask for uh, of everyone. Uh, I, I'm already starting to hear from people via LinkedIn uh, about wanting to come on. Um, Danielle Welch is going to come on with me tomorrow. And I think I have the rest of the week lined up. But I think we're going to be in this for a while. And so Monday through Friday, I will do this every single day, 20, 30 minutes of, of just telling people stories, see if we can get the word out, see if we can all support each other. And uh, so if you want to get a hold of me, you can do, through, do so through joelgoldbergmedia.com. You can reach me joel at joelgoldbergmedia.com uh, or you can hit me at um, on LinkedIn to search for me, Joel Goldberg, uh, and all the other social media platforms. And I will try to get everybody in or as many as I can over time. And, and my only ask of you is share this because I think people need it right now. People need to hear these stories. People need to be able to hear some of these strategies of hope. Luke is, is such a, a high energy um take no for an answer kind of guy, not pushy, just meaning that he's uh, he's not going to give up. And I, I think we could all learn a little something from that. So thanks to Luke Wade of KC Crew. I am Joel Goldberg. I will be back here tomorrow. A little cross promotion too. If you're a baseball fan, uh, my friend Victor Rojas, who is the play-by-play -play television announcer of the Los Angeles Angels, um, that name for anybody in Kansas City might be familiar uh, Victor Rojas's dad is Cookie Rojas, who was a second baseman for the Royals back in the 70s. And then uh, Victor actually went to high school in Kansas City at Blue Valley High School. He and I are doing a daily video baseball show that'll be up on all the platforms, too. That, that began a couple of days ago. So if you're uh, joining for some baseball, you can find us there uh, in the entrepreneurial end of things and storytelling. I will be here every day. Pass it on, please. Uh, get a hold of me if I can help in any way. And I hope to catch you tomorrow on Rounding the Bases Live.